Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Bree Sports Center. I'm your host Bradford Ambrose. Alongside me Wayne Epps Jr. and Haley Thompson, sports editors at the Breeze. And today we're going to get started uh, with football. They won this past Saturday 40-13 to against University of Albany, Wayne. Right, they had a, a very good showing this weekend against Albany. Uh, There's very balanced offense, uh, offense uh, passing and running, uh, pretty much same about 250 yards each, uh, offense and, and on uh, passing and running the ball. So Daquan Scott uh, and Khalil Abdullah rushed for both 87 yards, and Daquan Scott scored two touchdowns and he uh, he broke the scoring record for Jamie. He you now has 240 points, uh, which passed David Bills, a kicker, um, for a few years ago. His record of 231. Uh, so, very, very good showing for the Dukes this weekend. Um, they got, of course, got the first conference one as well, so uh, good to finally get down to their belts after losing to Delaware last uh, the week before. So, um, was, I think that's really what they wanted to get, to kind of get things back on track, uh, moving forward to the really the meat of the conference schedule moving forward. So, uh, so it's good to see that this weekend. All right, Haley, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, just talking about Daniel Brown, he um, actually was injured last year in the West Virginia game. Um, so this weekend was really kind of the first that we saw much of him, and he actually tied the Bridgeforth and school records uh, for touchdowns, receiving touchdowns in a single game. So kind of seeing that really good, you know, first performance from him. Uh, excited to see what he does the rest of the season. Yeah, he was yeah. definitely a, a powerhouse uh, right. this past Saturday. And I want to make sure I get into uh, the uh, redshirt freshman, Gage Steele. He had 18 tackles and was a... Um, the uh, Sports Network's freshman of the, of, the, of the week for an SN National Award, so um, it was very good showing for him, too. So it's probably Stefan Robertson's uh, uh, backup coming up in the next few years, but he's playing alongside him this year, so uh, very very nice to see the young players stepping up. All right. Um, now we're going to uh, shift gears and talk about field hockey. We learned um, Tuesday afternoon that uh, the head coach, Antoinette Lucas, um, uh, resigned. Uh, from her position. Uh, Haley? Yeah, Lucas had been with the team for a while. Um, they were doing, you know, they were picked preseason third to finish in the CAA. They weren't exactly, um, you know, showing that well in their CAA games so far. But it, they were 6-6 six and six, um, as of Tuesday. So, I mean, it's not like the record was that terrible. Um, we, you know, as of when they made the announcement, aren't really sure why she resigned. Um, and with a record like that, it's kind of unsure. Her two assistant coaches, um, the associate head coach and the new assistant coach this year, were both new hires for JMU. Um, they had recently, or they had previously done some work with JMU, so, I mean, they're not exactly new to the program, but new to them really has that much tenure, you know, under their belts as far as being a head coach, so we'll be, you know, interested to see how they do the rest of the season, especially since they have their two toughest CAA games coming up uh, next week, I believe, Drexel and Northeastern towards the end of the month. All right, uh, and Wayne, let's uh, now talk about men's soccer. They are 4-4-1 four, four, and one overall this season so far. Right, they, they dropped their first conference game of the year this weekend uh, against uh, Northeastern 2-1. to one. Uh, So it's been kind of a roller coaster for a season. They haven't won consecutive games until their, since their first two um, games of the season, which are both wins. Uh, since then, it's been up and down, win, loss, tie, win, loss, tie, pretty much. Um, so again, they're 4-4-1. Four, four, and one. And, uh, and Coach Martin said after the game that he's looking to, he might make some changes uh, to get more consistencies from his team, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how, how that shakes out moving forward. Um, also, at this point in the season last year, they were five, I believe, five, five, and two. Uh, so pretty much the same thing, up and down, up and down, these last couple of seasons. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they try to shake that out this year. All right, and now let's uh, preview this Saturday's football game against U of R, a highly anticipated game uh, in state rivals. Uh, last last year, uh, U of R won 35 to 29. Um, at Robin Stadium, um, and they lead the series 13, 17 to 13. Excuse me. Uh, currently, U of R's record is two and three overall, and zero and one in CAA. Wayne. Right. Yeah. You, you can't. You can't ever under, underestimate our conference opponents. But yeah, Richmond's having a bit of a down year this year. Uh, if you remember last year, the Richmond game was the year that uh, Justin Thorpe was benched, and Michael Burson came in. After that, he was he became a starter um, for. A couple games before Bert Thorpe came back in after that, so uh, that was kind of a turning point in the season last year. But uh, different team this year, and it's at home, so uh, you might expect a different outcome. So um, it'll be interesting to see how, if they can uh, keep up their, their balanced attack as they showed against Alvin this week uh, against Richmond. All right, Haley, anything else you'd like to add? Um, this is also JMU's first national television game of the season. Um, so as much as it's highly anticipated as a state rivalry, it's also highly anticipated by everybody here at JMU to kind of perform on a national level. All right.
And that'll do it for this edition of the Bree Sports Center. For Haley, Wayne, I'm Bradford. Thanks for watching.